Do you get tired of typing in your password every time you walk away from your computer and then you come back and then suddenly your screen is locked and now you have to type in your password over and over and over again? There's a fix for that. You can set up auto login for your computer. Besides the reason I just mentioned, why would you want to do that? Yeah, maybe fine for like your computer setup at home where it's a secure type of environment. But what about business? What about at your work? Actually, yeah, in some situations, it actually might be a good idea. Obviously, there are security reasons why you would not want to do this. And we'll talk about all of those, but we will also talk about good reasons why you would want to do this. By the way, this video does not contain any personal information. No personal information is being released. I have to say this because of YouTube policy. So YouTube, everything's okay. I'm not releasing any personal information about anybody. Please do not block my video. So you would reboot the computer, right? And this is typically what you would get. You get to a screen, you press enter, and then you can type in your password, right? That's great. And that's part of the security. And normally in a business environment, you wouldn't even get this option where it automatically populates the username at all. The only reason this comes up is because Kobuman here, this login ID, is set to be the default login ID. This is another thing that we can talk about as part of the security. But let's go ahead and set up our auto login just to show how this works. All right, let's get right into it. We're going to open up our registry editor because this is where we're going to make our changes in order for our auto logon to work. If you're not comfortable with using the registry editor, that's fine. However, if you follow these instructions exactly, you should be able to do it. And you can also do this on remote computers. So if you select file and then select connect to network registry, and you can type in the name of the computer that's on your domain on your network. So let's say you have a computer that's on your domain called computer one. You can connect to that computer remotely and make changes remotely. The only thing you would have to do afterwards is reboot the computer for changes to take effect. If you don't know how to open up a registry editor, you can do Windows R, Windows key R on your keyboard, type in regedit.exe as so, and then click OK. And then you would have to use your administrator privileges, or you can just search in the search box for reg editor, and then you can right click it and run it as administrator. So the settings we want to modify are actually located in our H key local machine because we are making changes to our local machine. Hence, we're going to go to this folder and we're going to make changes in there. So this is logically set up the way registry is for it to make sense. All right. So we're going to expand by clicking on the arrow. We're going to expand H key local machine. And then we're going to make changes to what? We're going to make changes to software because operating system in this case is software. So we're going to expand software. So what kind of software, right? We're going to have to scroll down and look for specific brand of software that we are modifying. So what's the brand of the operating system? Well, you guessed it right. That would be Microsoft. So we're going to look for a folder called Microsoft. Here it is. And we're going to expand that even further, right? So what's the next part we're going to look for? We're going to modify part of Windows operating system that's called Windows NT. So Windows used to be called Windows NT back in the day. And this is why the system is still called that in the registry editor. So all the versions of operating systems were built on that. So in the Microsoft that we've expanded Microsoft folder, we're going to scroll down. We're going to look for a folder called Windows NT. So since it's W, it's going to be all the way at the bottom. So I'm just going to keep scrolling and we're going to look for Windows NT. And here it is right here. And we're going to expand that. And the next thing we're going to do is expand the following folder, which is called current version, right? The current version of the operating system. We're going to click on it and expand it. The last thing we're going to look for is the thing that we are modifying. So what are we modifying? We are modifying Windows logon, right? So we're going to look for a folder called Windows logon. So we're going to keep scrolling down since we expanded another menu or another folder, I should say. And we're going to find a folder called the Windows logon and we're going to simply click on it. 
because everything that we want is located in the windows logon folder and as you can see all of these entries are related to windows logon and how it controls windows log in right so in case i've lost you with all of these menus all these subfolders well here it is actually it's right here this is the path that we just took so every time you are lost and you have registry editor open just look at this here and that's the same path you would have to take again so again it's computer and then we went to hq local machine folder then we expanded that and then we found the folder inside called software then we expanded that and then inside of software we found microsoft then we expanded that and then we found windows nt <laughs> then we expanded that and then we found current version then we expanded that and then we finally find win, win logon folder which we have selected and we're going to make changes inside of it which is right below it here actually sorry i know it's a lot of pathing <laughs> hey this is what happens when you're an it professional and even if you're new to it you're going to become just like me and everybody else who's an IT professional and you're just going to get used to this type of stuff. It's okay. So we're going to have to create a new string within Windows registry, within Windows logon folder that will allow this to function. So we need to create a new string. You see all of these icons that says A, B? They're all strings. That's all, that's all they are. They're just text strings that, that can be modified. All they do is just hold information about the text that's being inputted there is no encryption there is no hexadecimal calculations or anything like that so in order to make this work we're going to have to create a new string value so we're going to right click anywhere within this folder with all these registry settings we're going to right click it with a mouse and then we're going to select new because that's the only thing we have and then we're going to select string value you can do the same thing if you feel more comfortable by selecting the edit menu here and then select new and then new string value just make sure that your correct folder down here is selected because it's going to create it inside of that so i like to do it within the folder itself so i'm going to do it like this right click and then i'm going to select new string value and this new string value as you can see it on the bottom there we're going to name it we're going to name it auto auto admin logon so the reason we're going to make it this here is because we are going to use our current admin local profile and we're going to make it auto login now i know this sounds like we're just going to make our admin login work like this but that's not necessarily the case we can also do this for a domain login and I will show you that as last part of this configuration. So we have our auto admin string installed or configured or added. We haven't configured it yet, but we're going to have to actually double click it and we're just going to type in value as one. So what does this mean? One just means that it's on, you know, zeros and ones, zero means off one means on in this case we're going to set it up to one that means that we're going to activate auto admin logon all right so we have our auto admin logon set up the next part is to make sure that we have an entry that's called default user name default user name is already in here and you can see it as an entry right here if i double click on it you can see that it says inside as value data it says kobo man and as you saw earlier that my computer came up to this point where it says oh yeah kobo man is the user and that's what we are looking at right here this is their registry entry when i showed you actual screen of my computer and this is why it's entered in here if there's nothing in here i can simply add a new one and then make sure that the data value is pointing to that or whatever you want to use right whatever you want that login id to be but if you're missing this you can certainly add it so create a new value just like i showed you so right click new string value type in default username double click it and then type in whatever the login id is for you this could also be for like a domain login if you will so if i was to delete this right now 
then my computer would simply get to a point where it says enter your login ID and password. There would be no Kobo man there, right? If I was to delete this, all you would see it says put in your login ID and password. And this is what you want in some cases in a business environment when it's a computer that's used by one person right so if it's used by one person you would also want to add more security to it by enabling and having the user having to type in alt control delete just to even unlock that window where you can put in your login id and password right so i have to make sure that you understand this auto login is really good for either an area where it's high traffic area and you have many people using it in the sense where they just need a dummy computer to access their basic stuff that they still need to log in to. So instead of having to type in your password, they can just have what they call a generic login ID and you can set it up to automatically log in. However, to make this secure, right? To make this secure, you have to set up another layer of security. So yes, it's great that you can set up auto login and it will automatically log into the computer. Computer will be unlocked, but the things that are being used on the computer better be secured. So if the only thing that the person is using is a website, that website better require some kind of a personal login for whoever decides to use that computer. And that website better shortly expire if that person is not using it. Meaning if I log in right now to check my bank account or something, that account, that website better be able to log out automatically if I'm not using it within like 30 seconds, right? So you got to have another layer of security if you're going to use an auto login and a business environment. If you're using it at home, I mean, it's fine, right? It's your home. Hopefully your home is locked. There's nobody else. That might be fine unless somebody steals your computer and then they can just log into your computer so <laughs> it's a matter of convenience but there are definitely pros and cons meaning there are good things and bad things anyways i didn't mean to put this part of it in here as we are configuring but i just want to make sure that you understand this all right so let's kind of reiterate we got auto admin login setup which is set to one we got our default login or default username setup it's entered in there so what's the next step the next step is to set up a default password so for that we're going to have to edit default password entry and if it's not there we're going to have to install it so we're going to have to set up our password we're going to right click new string value we're going to name it default password very simple we're going to double click it or, or press enter to open the dialog box so we can enter our password so then here you would put in whatever your password is so if your password is password you would type it in again i'm not going to use my real password here at all because i i'll do it off off the camera because i don't want to have to blur it out but you get the idea whatever the password is in this case for kobuman you would type it in and again, YouTube, this is all fictional. Please don't block my video. This is all fictional. No personal information is being released here at any sort. This is only for educational purposes. Okay, all right. <laughs> the last thing you need to do, if it's a domain login, let's say Kobuman here is a domain login. So, you know, default username, Kobuman. Let's say this Kobuman is part of a, an Active Directory domain and uh, it needs access to the domain in order to authenticate, meaning to have the permission to log into this computer that happens to be part of domain, right? So it's part of Active Directory. You have to edit this part here where it says default domain name entry. So it's another string. If it's not existent, you can go in and enter it. So right click string new and add this entry here where it says default domain name, double click it, change the value see right now it's just a dot that just means it's local but if you type in for example the name of just the, whatever the name is for your company so i'm just going to use this this is typical microsoft 
the main name you can just type that in click OK and now it's going to authenticate through the domain the auto login all right so you can set up these auto logins uh, on a domain computer as well all right since I don't want that I'm going to delete this I'm just going to use a local right I'm going to use local admin and I'm going to I'm going to put my password in I just don't want to show it to you and I'm going to reboot the computer and show you how it automatically logs in all right I told it to restart the computer so I'm just waiting for it to reboot here there it is that's my post and utilities for the raid setup that's on this computer anyways windows is booting right now here comes the login or auto login right now there it is kobo man and automatically login in and there you go and if you like this type of content please like the video leave a comment just say hello higher present just to tell me that you are interested in this type of stuff it's really hard for me to come up with new ideas but I really appreciate it when somebody does leave a nice comment. It really is a motivating thing for me. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care and I'll see you next time.